So in this video, you're going to learn to add and subtract rational expressions. So kind of where we're headed here is we're going to take, here I have an example of two rational expressions that I'm adding together. Now, since these are fractions, um, we're going to need to find a common denominator to add these two rational expressions. And I'm going to show you a way to do that in this video. And the way that I'm going to show you uses a Venn diagram. And so this is something that most people are probably not familiar with. A Venn diagram is just a, is just a graph, a real simple two-circle graph that is used to help organize information. And it's really going to make it easy to add and subtract rational expressions or to build these rational expressions into like rational expressions, meaning they'll have the same common denominator. Now since this Venn diagram might be a little bit new, I'm going to start out with just some numbers and show you how to use the Venn diagram. And then from there, we'll transition to rational expressions that have uh, polynomials in the numerator and denominator. Okay, so we're going to take a look at an example and then a practice problem for you. I'll work the example and then we'll pause the video player and you work the practice problem. So we're going to start uh, by building like fractions and we're going to need to do this with rational expressions but I think it's going to be easier for us to understand what's going on if we start out just looking at numbers here. So I've got in my example here, I've got two fractions. Let's say I'm going to add or subtract these fractions. I would need a common denominator. So this is how we use a Venn diagram here I'll show you to get a common denominator. So the first thing we do is we take these two denominators, 21 and 9, and we factor them into their prime factorization. So the prime factorization for 21 is just 3 times 7, and for 9, that is 3 times 3. So I'm breaking these down into their prime factored form. Okay. Now I'm going to put these factors into the Venn diagram. And you'll notice in the Venn diagram I got a circle here for 21, and I got a circle for 9, and there's an overlap here. And that overlap represents the common that these two num common factors that these two numbers have. And so in that case, they both share this common factor of 3. So I'm going to put that common factor of 3 in the middle. And notice when I put it in the middle, that common factor of 3 is going to count in the circle for 21 and also the circle for 9. Okay. Now 21 also has a factor of 7, so I'm going to put that here outside of the overlap. 9 has another factor of 3. Okay. Once I get these factors into that Venn diagram now, all I have to do is multiply all of these factors together to find the least common denominator. So I'll take 7 times 3 times 3. And let's see, uh, 7 times 3 is 21. And then 21 times 3 is 63. So the LCD for these two, two uh, fractions is 63. Now, the Venn diagram will also give us our missing multipliers. Notice if we take a look back up here for the circle for 21, the only factor that is missing out of our LCD is this factor of 3. And so 21 is missing this factor of 3. So that's the missing multiplier for 21. Now if we take a look at 9, the only factor that 9 is missing is this 7. So that is our missing multiplier for 9. Now I'm going to take these two multipliers in this step, thir step 3, which is to build like fractions, and that's going to give us these like fractions. So for 21, my missing multiplier was 3. That means I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom by this fraction, by, of this fraction by 3. And so that will give me 3. And we already know that 21 times 3 is going to give us 63, our common denominator. And now for 9, our denominator of 9, the missing multiplier was 7. So I'm going to use that 7. And so that would give me 14 in the numerator. And we already know the denominator is 63. So what I could do now, I've built these into like fractions, is now I could go ahead and add or subtract these fractions depending on what was asked of me. So you can see that the Venn diagram does a couple things for us. It finds us the LCD, and it also finds us these missing multipliers that we need to multiply by the fractions to get that common denominator. All right, now it's time to pause your video player and answer this practice problem one. Find, a, or sorry, build these fractions, 3 fourteenths and 1 tenth into like fractions using this Venn diagram. When you get done working the problem by yourself, uh, push play and then you'll watch me do it and make sure you did the, the process correctly. Okay, So step one is to identify the LCD and the first part of that is to factor both of these denominators. So with 14, the prime factorization for that is 2 times 7 and for 10 it's 2 times 5. Okay, Once we get this factored, now we have to put these factors into the Venn diagram. So notice the factors that they have in common they just have a common factor of 2. So that is going in the overlap. 14 also has a common fa of a factor of 7. That is only to, common to itself. And then 10 has another factor of 5. So now if we multiply all three of these factors together, it'll give us the LCD. So we're thinking 7 times 2 times 5. 
And so I'm going to take and multiply 2 times 5 first, which will give me 10. 10 times 7 will give me 70. So that's my least common denominator. Now let's talk about the missing multipliers. 14, the only factor that 14 is missing out of this LTD is 5. So with the denominator 14, our missing multiplier is going to be 5. The only factor 10 is missing is the 7. And so with a denominator of 10, our missing multiplier is going to be 7. Now we're going to plug these missing multipliers into our, our, our structure below to build like fractions. So our, for, for our denominator of 14, our missing multiplier was 5. So I'm multiplying by 5 over 5. For 10, the missing multiplier was 7. Now let's take a look at our new like fractions. So our first one, 3 times 5, gives me 15. And that was a denominator of 70. And in the second one, 1 times 7 gives me 7. And then denominator of 70. Now I have like fractions. I could go ahead and add or subtract these fractions. OK, so now let's use that same technique. But now let's take a look at some rational expressions that have polynomials in them. We're going to use the same process. So here in my example, I have a denominator of x squared minus 1 and another denominator of 5x plus 5. And what I need to do now is find the common denominator for these two uh, fractions. And so that is a little tricky. But with this Venn diagram here, it's going to actually it's gonna break it down and make it pretty nice for us. So the first thing that we did in the last problem was to factor. And we're going to start out the same way. So I'm going to start here by factoring this x squared minus 1. And so I want to think a little bit differently now. I'm factoring polynomials. So notice this is a difference of squares here. So I'm going to factor this into x plus 1 and x minus 1. Okay, uh, With 5x plus 5, uh, I have a greatest common factor of 5 there that I can factor out. So when I factor out that 5, I'll have 5 times x plus 1. Okay, I've got my factor done. Now I need to put that into the Venn diagram. So notice they share a common factor of x plus 1. So that common factor of x plus 1 is going to go in the middle. Now with x squared minus 1, we also have this other factor of x minus 1. And with 5, x plus 5, we also have this other common factor of 5. Or sorry, a factor to, unto itself that's 5. Okay, So I've got all of my factors now into the Venn diagram. So if I multiply all of that stuff together, that is going to give me the LCD. And so I'm going to take this 5 first, because usually we write the uh, coefficient out front. So I'll write 5, and then I'll take the next factor, which is x plus 1, and then that final factor, which is x minus 1. Okay, so that is my LCD. All right, now let's find the missing multipliers. So for x squared minus 1, the only factor that was missing out of that circle was this 5. So that's my missing multiplier there. And with 5x plus 5, the only factor that was missing out of that circle was this x minus 1. So that is my factor there. So now I'm going to take these missing multipliers and put them into the structure below. Okay. So notice what I did is I wrote the original fractions that I had up here, except now I'm going to leave those denominators in factored form. Notice that x squared minus 1, that's what it looks like in factored form. And we want to leave the denominators factored here because that is going to make things a lot easier when we go to add and subtract and then have to simplify these, these uh, rational expressions. So I'm leaving that denominator factored, but it's still the same process. So for x squared minus 1, that was missing a multiplier of 5. So that's going to be my missing multiplier here, 5 over 5. And so that will give me 5 in the numerator. And I've already written this out here, what our denominator is going to be. That was our LCD, 5 times x minus 1 times x plus 1. Okay, uh, 5x plus 5 that was missing a factor of x minus 1. So I'm going to take and multiply the top by x minus 1, and the bottom by x minus 1. Okay, And you'll notice that's just going to give us our denominator here, that common denominator. Now in the numerator, I want to go ahead and multiply those things together. So we leave the denominator factored, but it's easiest if we go ahead and multiply the numerators. Um, when we go to add or subtract, we're going to have to combine things together, and that's going to be a lot easier once things are multiplied. So I'm going to multiply in the top here this 2 times this x minus 1. So I'm going to have to distribute that 2. So I'll take 2 times x, which will give me 2x. Then I'm going to take 2 times negative 1, which will give me negative 2. Okay. So now I've built like fractions. Notice they both have the same common denominator. And now if I was asked to, I could add or subtract these fractions because they have like denominators. Okay. Now it's time to check your understanding by doing a practice problem. 
However, before you pause the video player and start this practice problem, you might want to rewind and watch me work through that example again. But if you feel like you got the example, go ahead and pause it. If not, go back and take a look. And then pause the video player and then work this problem, practice problem number two here, and then hit play to see how you did. Okay, practice problem two. Here are my denominators up here. I need to first factor these. So I'm going to factor this 2x minus 2, greatest common factor of 2. So that will be 2 times x minus 1. And then with 4, that is just 2 times 2. Okay, I've got it factored. Now I need to put these factors into the Venn diagram. Notice they have a common factor of 2. That's going in the overlap. Uh, 2x minus 2 also has this factor of x minus 1. 4 also has another factor of 2. So now I just multiply all three of these factors together to get my LCD. So my LCD will be 2 times 2 times this x minus 1. And we're going to go ahead and leave that factored out. It's easiest to leave the denominator factored. Okay. Now let's talk about the missing multipliers. 2x minus 2, the only factor that was outside of that circle is this factor of 2. And 4, the only factor outside of that circle was this x minus 1. So there are my missing multipliers. I'm going to put those down in the framework. Uh, this is 2x minus 2, but again, I'm leaving that in factored form. So 2x minus 2 was just missing a 2, so I'm going to multiply top and bottom by 2. In the denominator, I'm going to leave that factored, so it would look like this, 2 times 2 times x minus 1. In the numerator, I'll go ahead and multiply these out because I want to simplify the numerator. So 2 times 3 gives me 6. Now, for my denominator of 4, that was missing a factor of x plus 1. Sorry, x minus 1. So I'm going to multiply top and bottom by x minus 1. Uh, in the numerators, I'm going to go ahead and multiply that. I have to distribute the 1 here, which really isn't going to change a lot. It'll be x minus 1 in the numerator. In the denominator, I'm going to leave that factored. 2 times 2 times x minus 1. Okay. So you've gone through some practice problems and some examples showing you how to find the common denominator and build like fractions. Now let's go ahead and do a problem where we're actually going to add these things together after we have those like fractions. So go ahead and pause your video player and use that Venn diagram technique to find the common denominator, to find the missing multipliers, and build these into like fractions. Once you get done, go ahead and add them and get your answer. Then hit play to see how you did. Okay, so I'll go ahead and work the problem now. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to factor four, uh, x squared minus 4, and that factors into x plus 2, x minus 2. And then I'll go ahead and factor 3x plus 6, greatest common factor of 3, so I get 3 times x plus 2. Okay, You'll notice they both have a common factor of x plus 2. So in my Venn diagram, that's going to go into the overlap. So my first circle here is going to be for x squared minus 4. My second circle here will be for uh, three time, uh, 3x plus 6. Okay, so for x squared minus 4, the common factor of x plus 2 is going in the center. Okay, the only other factor I have there is x minus 2 on the left. Now for 3x plus 6, the common factor of x plus 2 is in the middle, and then the, the only other factor I have outside of that is 3. Okay, so my LCD then is going to be this uh, 3 times x minus 2, x plus 2. We usually write the coefficient that 3 first. Okay? So there's my common denominator. Now I need to retake my, take my original fractions here and build these into like fractions. So my original fraction, 1 over x squared minus 4, I'm going to actually factor that bottom, x squared minus 4, which was x plus 2, x minus 2. Okay? And I'm going to multiply that by my missing multiplier. So I go take a look at the circle here. The only factor that was missing was 3. So that's what I'm going to use in my missing multiplier to build like fractions. So in the numerator I multiply it. 3 times 1 is 3. In the denominator I leave it factored. 3 times x plus 2, x minus 2. Okay. My next fraction, uh, 2 and that 3x plus 6, I'm going to write that factored times x plus 2. Okay, That was missing a factor of x minus 2. So I'm going to multiply both top and bottom by x minus 2. Okay, So that's going to give me 
I'm going to multiply the numerator, so that means I need to distribute this too. So that's going to give me 2x minus 4. The denominator I leave factored. 3 times x plus 2, x minus 2. Okay? I'm running out of space here, so normally we would write these next to each other, but I'm going to go ahead and add them kind of down the page here to save some space. So when we add fractions, or rational expressions for that matter, notice now we have common denominators here. It's kind of messy, but they're the same. So the denominator is going to say the same. So in the denominator of my fraction here, I'm going to have this stuff. 3x plus 2, x minus 2. Now in the numerators, I'm going to go ahead and add these things together. So I'm adding this 3 and this 2x minus 4. Well, the only things I can add there are my constant terms. 3 plus negative 4. Well, 3 plus negative 4 is negative 1. So actually what I get in the numerator is 2x minus 1. So now there's my answer, but I've got to make sure this answer can't be simplified. And that's why we leave the denominator factored. Notice the numerator can't be factored anymore. 2x minus 1, I can't factor that anymore. And now, since I have the denominator factored, I can compare the numerator, the factors in the numerator, which is just this 1, this whole thing right here, since I couldn't factor it anyways, anymore. I consider that whole thing a factor. If that factor was to match up with something in the denominator, I could divide it out and simplify this fraction. But you can see now that nothing divides out. And you can also see why we leave the denominator factored. Because if the denominator wasn't factored at this point, I'd have to go back and factor the denominator out to see if I had any common factors. So since there aren't any factors in common, this is my final simplified answer of adding these two rational expressions together.